Hello, everybody. Physically, mentally exhausted. Cappy here. We got a video request. And if you have a video request, you can always go to assholeconsulting.com, where I will come down off the mountain peaks. Saw snow. We were in Las Vegas. We saw. We were above the snow line in mountains in Las Vegas. They still have snow in the middle of June. So it was very interesting. And not a lot of oxygen up in those mountains. All right. Uh, young man writes, Chris writes. Uh, <coughs> you know what? You girls could just send me good, well emails and all poor baby emails. That'd be good. If any of you girls who are fans on YouTube, you could pamper me, and through digital pampering, I might get better. Anyway, Chris writes. Hi, Aaron. I'm making a ton of money and have had an awesome recovery thanks to your advice. Yay! See? See? Truth works. Truth is cheap. You just have to tolerate me. I've almost mastered Khan Academy in math, physics, and chemistry as well. Wonderful! Good! All right. However, my video request is not about me today, but rather the underappreciated value of scientists and engineer. For example, I see many people on your channel have got awesome degrees in chemical and electrical engineering, but are unable to find jobs. My question is, how does a really skilled person, such as a scientist or an engineer, overcome the bitterness, anger, and frustration of not being able to find a job in their field of study? It seems that this society does not care about its future, and throw anybody into the scrap heap regardless of their talent or skill. Well, that, that's true, yeah. In an ideal world, scientists and engineer graduates would get all the jobs of scientists and engineers. Same goes with other professions as well, accountants, lawyers, doctors, teachers, etc. In other words, why doesn't the real world use the potential of these people? Please give us your big brother advice on this. <coughs> and then he has a secondary follow-up question, which I'll answer at the end of this. Um, so here's the deal. Uh, with the engineers addressing why they are not good finding jobs, why they here's the thing: you actually are, and I don't mean you personally. You personally may not have a job, and you may be very pissed off. But as a whole, the empirical evidence is that engineers, scientists, and other STEM field people are still doing the best. Now, keep in mind, overall the labor market sucks for young people. It sucks for college graduates, and labor force participation rate is going down. I mean, people are just leaving the labor market all together. I know the unemployment rate is going down to 5.4%, but that's largely hokum. Uh, it doesn't apply to you new college graduates. But when it comes to college graduates, STEM still does better. And the evidence is here, and I'm, I'm going I'm to we'll try and go through a concept here of economics, a little economics lesson. If you look at starting salaries, this is from um, payscale.org. This is 2013 to 2014 starting salaries. Petroleum engineering, under 3000 Actuarial science, 59,000. Nuclear engineering, 67,000. Chemical engineering, 68,000. Electrical engineering, 64,000. Uh, computer science, 59,000. Physics, 53,000. Software engineering, 60,000. Economics, only 50,000. Government, only 43. Now we scroll down to where all the dipshits are who just basically consume tax dollars and borrow money to buy worthless degrees. Child and family services, $30,000. Elementary education, $32,000. Social work, $33,000. Fart, poop, joke, athletic guy, athletic training, that's <laughs> uh, $35,000. Gym teacher is what I'm talking about. Shut the fuck up. Human development, I don't know what the fuck that is. That's a new one I've heard. Uh, 6,000 special education, that's babysitting kids that uh, t uh, kids uh, parents don't really like or want to babysit anymore, 34,000. Biblical studies, 35,000. You could go through this, look this up yourself. Empirically speaking, engineers and STEM still are doing the best. Now, it may not feel that way because we still are in a, in a labor market recession, especially for the younger people, but it's still your best option. Now, you ask a very interesting philosophical question. In, 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 the, in the real world or in the, in the should have world, should it? <coughs> engineer majors be engineers and doctors be doctors and lawyers be lawyers. That's the world that should have. That's not how the real world works. You see, the real world works by operating by these things called people. And people are highly flawed. Matter of fact, I think they're the most hated thing in my personal life. And if you think about it, they're the most hated thing in most people's lives because, I mean, how can you hate a tornado? A tornado is destructive, but it's not like you have a personal animosity. A tornado does not have sensuousness. How can you hate an earthquake? You can hate people because they consciously make stupid decisions. 
right? And they do it, and they, they, they should have the capacity not to. Now, these stupid people, through borrowing debt and lying to people who become good politicians but not good statesmen, they get into positions of power. And they tell you all, I have a great post about society versus the individual. Look it up, parts one and two, society versus the individual. And society <coughs> is not necessarily headed up by the best. Matter of fact, because we have a democracy and people are stupid, they will listen to lies that make them feel good even though it's not based in, tr based in truth. So, you idiot kids, not you, not you STEM majors, you're told follow your heart and the money will follow and you will go and you'll major in worthless crap but you'll enrich a bunch of worthless professors along the way. You'll believe that, oh, you know, Democrats are for the little people. You'll vote for Democrats. They'll jack up taxes. They'll piss away all the money on the parasites of society. No one really gets a job. We punish corporations. There are no jobs. But, you know, some politicians made some really great lifelong uh, political careers off of that. Um, so you do not have the best. And banking, another perfect example, banking. Uh, there you have idiots who are in charge because you only make money if you lend money based on commission. So they have no incentive to actually get paid back on these loans. Matter of fact, I remember working in a bank that liked it when people were late in paying back the loans because then we get late fees. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? We're going to lose the collateral, which we did, and now that bank is closed. And that's not just one bank, that's a lot. Anyway, these are the people in charge. And as you see, overall macroeconomic figures like um, labor force participation, government spending as a percentage of GDP, economic growth, all these other metrics, the dependency ratios, you see that the stupid and the, the, the less intelligent people, the stupider quote people, are increasingly becoming in positions of power. So it's not going to work the way it should have. Okay? Yes, it would be nice, but that's not how it works. Now, all that being said, what engineers and STEM have working for them is that they work in the real world. See, a social worker does not work in the real world. Their major is like touchy flowers, feely children need to take some village to raise it. If we just have more money and we don't need fathers, a government check can replace fathers. Father, why do we need fathers? They, they beat their wives. Da, 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 da. Okay. So they don't live in the real world. However, everyone really wants these iPhones and the thing I'm filming you guys on and these computer things, and that's made by engineers. And no matter how much political leftist, self-centered, evil, maniacal, even pop culture bullshit and lies, fat acceptance, oh, what's Taylor Swift doing? Still couldn't name one song that stupid broad is saying. She may not be stupid, I don't know. Um, <clears throat> where was I going with this? Um, what do we say? So we can talk to the engineers. Oh, that's right. Uh, in the real world, ultimately it matters what in, it is in the real world. And so people want their iPhones. People want telecommunications. People want their gas in their cars. They want their cars. And that takes engineers. So, yeah, there's a lot of attention given to stupid shit like Kardashian or uh, Bruce Jenner and all that crap. But ultimately, when people want to spend their money, and they want to live, they're going to need, you know, farmers, engineers, accountants, people that actually work and get the shit done. Because without that, they don't have the time and the extra cash and the luxury of watching what's going on with the latest with Kim Kardashian's ass. So even though the overall macroeconomic economy is bad for engineers, and many of them are not finding jobs, the empirical evidence, as evidenced through starting salaries, shows it's still your best bet. <clears throat> All right, now... So the question isn't how shoulda, coulda, woulda. We don't live in the world of shoulda, we live in the real world of, you know, what is. <coughs> how do you get over that? Well, you, you just suck it up. You just gotta keep going, man. I never really was gainfully employed in finance. and I mean, I got paid, I worked several years in banking and finance, uh, but I was never ever anywhere near my potential. And this may be happening at, at the initial stages where you're, the major, you're highly trained to be a chemical engineer, you're highly trained to be an electrical engineer, computer programmer, but there's so many of you uh, that you're going to be doing progressively and increasingly uh, work that is beneath you. It's certainly that way in finance. There's no reason, no reason for anyone to have a college degree in finance. It just is pointless for, for entry-level positions in banking and insurance and finance. They should just go and hire some eighth graders who are really good at math and train them. Reliable, responsible eighth graders is, is what they should be hiring. Um, but you just got to sit there and you got to suck it up. Now, um, 
The other thing, and this is why I recommend in the book Patch of Pat Economics, is you got to realize that true wealth and true success does, it's not going to come from working for other people. It just isn't. I mean, yeah, you might be lucky enough to work, you know, some people do find that dream job and they really do work in their field that they really like. And they really are challenged and they really do use what they learn and their skills. But I can almost guarantee you guys to 99.5% certainty you're just not going to be ever challenged to your full potential. That's not how these idiots run the world nowadays. So what you need to do is you need to be self-employed. What that is, I don't know. Don't you dare ask me, you know, what I, what do I, what, I, what should I, what kind of business should I start? If I knew that, I'd start it. And I wouldn't tell you and I'd keep all the money for myself. But that's what you, that's where the engineers and the true innovators and the truly intelligent people of our country and society all over the world, that's where the money is made. Bill Gates dropped out. I think, didn't Zuckerberg drop out, drop out too? Jobs did. They, and... You know, you're, you're doing self-study. I would take those skills and start making business. That's what. That's where the money is. So for all of you, you, you have to, again, it's the two-prong approach. For those of you engineering majors or STEM majors who can't find jobs, keep applying. That's, that's all you got to do. Don't take it personally. It's not your fault. A lot of people, and he even provided a link here. He says, I think this is a serious issue. Here's a link of a PhD in physics graduate who was only able to find a job at a call center. Well, that's because you went and got your PhD, okay? Well, PhDs, you don't get PhDs in STEM. You get your bachelor's and you go fucking work. That, that'll serve you right for being in academia. But <clears throat> this guy killed himself. It's not your fault. The economy sucks. It is your fault if you voted for Obama twice or just once or keep voting Democrat. Then it is your fault. And I'm not going to go into the politics or economics of that. You could, you could just sit there and wallow in yourself, pity and wonder how you're ever going to pay back these student loans. But anyway, one, forgive yourself because it isn't really your fault. It's, it's the labor market, it's the economy, it's politics, and it's, it's economic policies we have put in place to be anti-growth and anti-corporation. <coughs> Two, keep applying anyway. Three, go overseas and apply. See if you can apply overseas. And then four, find some kind of job. I'll say it again. Well, buy bachelor pad economics and read it because there's a lot of wisdom there. And you would have spent a lot less money, just to, but it wouldn't have benefited everybody else. Anyway. Um, but the key thing is, that, is find a job where you can work on your own business. Librarian, security guard, parking lot attendant, something where you're just sitting doing nothing, something. And then go and start six, whatever number I'm on. Start your own business. That's the only way. And I'd like to say, if we just had a government program, if we just put more money into the into this, if we put more money into that, how about you lower the fucking taxes? How about you get rid of corporate taxes altogether? Have, what, the $2 trillion that's sitting overseas come in here? How about you quit criminalizing and hating on people who actually make money? And then maybe maybe the economy will grow. But I, that would require you all to you know, be truly intellectual, not just smart, but independent-minded and unshackle all this fucking brainwashing you guys got over in college. <clears throat> so that's what you got to do. And, and I'm sorry, there's no magic way. We just can't throw more money at something because wherever you throw that money, you're taking it from somewhere else, right? So you're just going to have to endure pain and suffering. That's the real world. It's not, uh, it just be, I don't know where these people come from, where they think it's supposed to be happy and perfect all the time. And they think the government is the agent of making everything better when it's proven time and time again, it is not. There's no way to make society perfect. There's no way. This is the world you're born into. Ask some old time baby boomers about 1980 to 1982. Ask them how that economy was. They're the exact same thing. You know what, you just suck it up and you try anyway. <laughs> but the long run, you need to be self-employed. That's it. You just need to be self-employed. Right. Now, then you have another question. Is it best for me to stay where I am and study physics on my own for intellectual purposes or take the risk and get a chemical engineering physics degree? Though there may not be a job at the end of it. Um, how does one overcome cognitive dissonance? They hit bottom. I'll answer that question real quick. All right, anyway. Uh, what I would do, you say you're making great money right now. I would just study it for entertainment purposes. Unless you had like a, a goal with it, like I wanted to get a job, then you would have to go get an engineering degree. Um, if you just want to like study it for fun and shits and giggles and you enjoy it, yeah, keep studying. And you know what? You don't need a degree to go and create an innovate. You know, Henry Ford didn't have his physics, you know, PhD in physics. He just 
built shit. I actually think he was illiterate too, matter of fact. Oh, but we're, we just focus on the letters, not the numbers. <laughs> Math is just for boys. This is, oh my goodness. Anyway, um, if you really want to work as a chemical engineer, sure. But if you're already making great money, I, I don't know if you'd want to like stop making great money and then go to school. The whole purpose of going to school is to make great money and you're already doing that. So what I would do is keep studying it on Khan's Academy. Uh, hopefully it's for a point and purpose like you're gonna make something. But if you're not, you just enjoy it. But if you want to like, the only reason you get a degree is that you want to go employ yourself or, or go work for somebody else. And then you can talk to the 24 year old HR cunt who doesn't know anything about valence electron configurations. She can't do molar conversions. She, she doesn't know how to subnet IP addresses. That's math. She's going to ask you what your favorite color is and why, and where you see yourself in five years. So, God Almighty, don't get a degree unless you absolutely really want to go work for someone else. Just keep making great money. Don't, don't stop your day job. That doesn't make any sense, your question you just asked me now that I think about it. I'm making great money. Should I go to school and piss away more or just enjoy studying Khan's Academy? I think you should just keep making great money and study Khan's Academy. Anyway. Hope that helped everybody. You got a question, go to assholeconsulting.com. We'll take care of your kids. Doodles.